So the example I'm going to use to show you how I do my stakeholder mapping is the example of the media industry. The reason I've chosen the media industry is that it has gone through a lot of change in the last decade. And this is largely due to one big disruption. So I want to show you firstly what the original stakeholder map really looked like for big media. And then we'll talk about that disruption as well. So to understand the media industry a little bit more, I've made up a company called Big Media and I've put in brackets there BAU for business as usual. So this is what the media industry was like before um, this big disruption of the last decade or even, even a bit longer than a decade. Now the first thing I want you to do is identify key stakeholders. Now these will largely be external stakeholders, which means members of the community that are influenced or influence the media company. There are also some key internal stakeholders and internal stakeholders are stakeholders that are committed to the company in some way. So the board of directors, key executives and some staff. So first we have governance, board of directors, the, the group of people who are guiding which way the media company goes. You'll have the owner or owners who will also usually sit on the board of directors along with shareholders and investors. You have enterprise. So companies that advertise and businesses that advertise with the media. You have the audience and you have government and politicians. The second thing I want you to do is identify those other key internal stakeholders. So we have the journalists, we have the salespeople and we have the executives. We, we have other people obviously in the business as well, but for now, let's just talk about those three. The third thing I want you to do is I want you to draw big arrows between the interactions where there is big influence. So in this case, the external investors and shareholders, well, they have a big influence on the board of directors. The board of directors have a big influence on how the media company is run. The media company has a big influence on the audience and their perception of the world through the lens of the media. The audience has a big influence on the government and which government is in power based on their vote. And enterprise. So this is a two-way uh, power dynamic where enterprise can influence the media as advertisers, as paying customers. And the media can influence enterprise um, by, you know, whistleblowing on a company that's not doing the right thing. The audience have a big influence on enterprise because they will make the decision of whether or not to purchase product. And internally, we also have the executives have quite a lot of power in the media companies as well. The fourth thing I want you to do is draw small arrows for small influence. The media company itself will have some influence on the governance on the board of directors. The board of directors will have an influence on external investors and shareholders. The salespeople and the journalists will have an influence on the media company. The audience has an influence on the media company as well because if the audience doesn't like what the media is writing, they may not read or listen or view what the media has put out. The government has an influence on the external investors and shareholders to a degree by the laws that they set. And enterprise have an influence on the audience itself by the products and services that they provide their audiences. Then we had a big disruption. So technology is something that is rapidly changing. And over the last 10 years, we've particularly seen rapid progress where we've gone from having computer, desktop computers and laptops to having smartphones, iPads, everything in the, in the palm of our hands. We have Google, Facebook, and YouTube, which means that we can create content ourselves and interact directly with the world around us, not through the lens of the media. We can search things directly. We can find content. We don't need the media to be the filter for us to consume content anymore. And at the same time, we also have the ability to create content ourselves. So audience suddenly have a lot more power through technology. So technology has had a huge impact on the public, on the audience that the media companies rely on. And in turn, this has decreased the influence of the media company on the audience. Technology has also had a big influence on enterprise. Enterprises have been exploring the ways in which they can use technology to ultimately increase their direct influence 
on the audience instead of via the media companies. And so that power dynamic has also shifted where we're seeing less of an influence on the media from the media companies on enterprise and vice versa. And as this disruption has taken place, it's left a lot of question marks for other key stakeholders in this industry. So for government, what do they need to be doing to increase popularity, to increase their chances of being voted back in? How do politicians handle that? External investors and shareholders who actually had quite a big influence on the perception of government don't have as much influence now. So what does that mean for them? They have less influence on enterprise, less influence on government. Where does that put them? The board of directors aren't sure how to take that next step to govern the media, where before media companies would often run at a loss because the, the power and the influence on society was so large, now it has less of an impact. So the dollars, need to, the dollars matter more now than they perhaps mattered before. And the, the board of directors need to work out what to do about that. The internal stakeholders, the people that relied on jobs from the media are now put into question. Lots of journalists have, have been made redundant. Salespeople aren't selling the same things they were selling before. Executives aren't sure what to do anymore. My, from my perspective, this highlights a big um, issue for the media industry. What are the reasons for having a media company now? Uh, it actually also highlights some you know, questionable power dynamics in there that are actually quite, uh, you know, uh, sinister in some cases. And now that that power has shifted, is it such a bad thing that the media don't have as much power as they had before? So where to from here? Now, when we've got a disrupted industry like the media, what we want to do is we un want to understand the mindset of stakeholders. So there are three questions that I think are really, really important to ask about every single stakeholder. And you can see I'm doing this as I make decisions about what sort of level of power I'm going to attribute to a particular dynamic. These three questions are, what's their current situation? What situation is that particular stakeholder in? What are their problems? What are their drivers and motivations? Where are they trying to get to? What's influencing their decisions? And what are they hoping to achieve? So what outcome are those stakeholders trying to achieve from interacting with this industry or interacting with a particular company? Now, I have another video that will help with this on custom personas that help talk through drivers and motivations. So I'll just put this down here as well. And if you'd like to hear more from me, please feel free to subscribe here for more whiteboard sessions.